If you're a brand new motorcycle rider, I know it's pretty intimidating and there's a lot of craziness out there. So we're actually going to be going over some of that craziness and explaining what is happening. So we have motorcycle crashes on this video. We also have some close calls and some training involved. So we're going to talk about what happened, how it happened, and what we could do better. I got some solutions for you, so make sure you pay attention and watch all the way through. We got timestamps, so you could have skipped this whole thing anyways, but we can keep moving forward. So let's get the training and let's make sure we are riding smart. Let's go to class. What do you think is going to happen here, everybody? We got this sign. I don't know. Let's find out. Another smashing video. Oh, it looks like Camelback, maybe. Oh, a little bit too wide. Oh, shite. <laughs> Gabe, hope you're doing all right, man. Oh, this one's going to be looking fun, too. All right, so let's take a quick look. So we got a 25-mile-an-hour little zigzag uh, caution sign. I call them little ziggles. Uh, it's a sharp left, sharp right, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's an offset, whatever you want to call it, but 25 recommend. Now, 25 recommend is going to be for cars, and this is one of those things I keep telling new riders and everyone else that thinks that they aren't new riders, but they pretty much are because they have new skills, but they've just been riding for a while. The thing is, 25 miles an hour, just do it. Just do the 25. It, it's, not, it's not that big of a deal. You think you can do 45? Okay, let's say you could do 50 miles an hour, so let's double that. You could do a 50 turn left, turn right. Good on you. What if something's in the road? What if there's gravel? What if you have a lapse in judgment? You know, what, what, what if, what if, what if? We could play the what if game all you want. You know, what if you make it 90% of the time? Cool. It's 10%. You didn't do it. So here's the thing. How about we just do the speed limit and then add it later? Enjoy the views. Enjoy the time you're riding. Talking on your Cardo Pack Talk Bold with your friends. You know, you just, just do those types of things. You know, we do have a discount in the, in the description for that, by the way, if you want to get anything from Cardo. But have fun talking to your friends, listening to music. Don't worry about going fast. Just because you were riding motorcycles, everybody, doesn't mean the only way we can have fun on motorcycles is by just going fast. I enjoy riding motorcycles because of the open air, because I could see the ground moving. I have to have full control of the motorcycle. It removes all external thoughts when all I have to think about is this one thing. And that is what I enjoy about motorcycles. I don't care about going fast. I absolutely just enjoy being on the motorcycle and seeing things and paying attention. I hope you guys are the same because if you go too fast because your only concern is just being a street Rossi, getting your knee down, you might have issues like this. Take a look. We're getting ourselves in a good position. We're going to go ahead and get super far down here. It's a 25 mile an hour road or turn at least. And we can't see very well. The road is terrible. I mean, it's Arizona roads, guys. Terrible road, going a little bit too wide. We are definitely, let's say we make this turn. Let's say we make it and we're able to ride this line. Are we set up for this next turn? That's possibly where you're going to crash too. So you got to be very careful with these things. Let's just not do this. Now, I could have been just a simple mistake and it's perfectly fine. So let's say it's a simple mistake. You just weren't paying attention to whoever, you know, there's an accident, 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 you're not speeding. We crash. Like, oh crap, we crash. Now, this is where hopefully your buddy is medically trained and rescue you if you're damaged. Let's minimize as much damage to our bodies and injuries by wearing full gear. So remember, be a smart rider. Acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. Oh, damn. Hope you're doing fine, Gabe. AJ hey, Carls, you did a good job with that progressive brake pressure to get yourself out of that situation. But here's the thing. Let's go ahead and seek out and recognize hazardous situations. Remember, smart rider principles. In this situation, what we have here is that side of the vehicle. And why do we have it? It's an intersection. Intersections, automatic, orange stage. We are prepped and ready. So cover those brakes like you did and find those escape paths if you need to. You did a good job. Just don't get so angry about it. Remember, we are trying to learn ourselves. We're trying to be better, better, better. 
We can't trust other people for our safety. It's our responsibility. All right. So the five biggest dangers to motorcyclists on the road, number three, panic stops. All right, so we're gonna be making sure that we're not doing that. Now, how do we do that? All right, so it's not gonna be like, oh crap, they came out of nowhere and I had to slam the brakes and lay her down. That's not the case, okay? If, if we're having to slam the brakes at the last second, we got a little poo in our pantalones and went into brown stage, we need to be going into red stage. If you don't know what the color code chart is, we do have a video on that and make sure you pay attention. It's an older video, we might have to update it, but panic stop. So right now I'm not paying attention. It's a red light coming up ahead. Oh crap. No, you need to pay attention. As a smart rider, you're seeking out and recognizing hazardous situations. And if you notice, I'm not panicking. I'm coming to a nice stop. I'm using the rear brake and engine braking this whole time. So you could utilize that. You don't have to go crazy all of a sudden last second go boop and slam the brakes, okay? So that's what's getting a lot of people. Now, intersections are pretty easy to, to, to see ahead. But when a vehicle comes out at you and they get in front of you like a left turn or right turn, ooh, they might make you a little poo-poo and you get panicked. Now, the thing is, you can see that pattern ahead of time. You can be prepped and ready, go into orange stage, you already get your hands on the brakes, already starting to squeeze, reduce your perception reaction braking distance equal total stopping distance. You can easily do that, okay, if you pay attention. So seek out and recognize those hazard situations, be a smart rider, and you will have less and less and less panic stops, everybody, okay? Pay attention, all right? Jesus. Fuck you! Hey Dogfly, I just talked to Jay Carls about this. We need to be paying attention to those sides of the vehicles. We don't need to spend too much time on this one because this happens so much. We should start paying attention and figuring it out on our own, but that's what we're here in class for. So make sure you're paying attention to that side of the vehicle, orange stage, because it's an intersection. Be careful about corners too. Those are deadly, but uh, let's keep watching. Let's pay attention in class and learn more from all these mistakes and uh, close calls and crashes. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Oi! Oh! All right, so we're going to have a little bit of fun now. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, class. It's perfectly. If you want to do this, you do this. Okay, look at There's like nobody in the vicinity. Nobody in the vicinity except for maybe this vehicle, but they're way back there. I don't think there's anybody else coming this way. This is like those residential streets that are surface streets. They're not main roads. And so he probably just came from his house. But let's say you screwed up like this person did. What do we do to minimize the injury possibility? Wearing gear. Now, it's kind of hard to wear full gear when you're doing stuff like this. So just do the risk management. Okay, if you're going to do some craziness, if you're going to be hauling ass, maybe gear. But if you're not going to be doing that, eh, maybe you can get away with some road rash. Hopefully no broken bones. But do your own risk management. Are you okay with possibly getting hurt for doing something? I'm not. Because my career, my life, my kids, everybody needs me to be healthy. So I don't, I don't do giant risks. I just don't. So we're going to do this. A little bit of fun wheelies. All right. Let it go. <laughs> just let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. So there's that shoulder injury. There's the hand and feet. That thing's landing on your ankles. You're going to get some road rash on your right hip, your right side. Hopefully you don't hit your head. Let's see if he hit his head. Oh, was that a bounce? No. That was, so there's the right shoulder. I don't think he hit his head, thankfully, because that you can easily get a traumatic brain injury from that. Uh, dude's jacked though he's, he's like tackling the tackling the motorcycle all right moving on real quick i'd like to say thank you to cardo for sponsoring this channel i'm actually using their cool little headset thingy thing so i could talk to my kids on their cardo pack talks make sure you guys grab yourself a cardo pack talk bold slim free com whatever you want with the link in the description you get a discount anyways let's get back all right so raining nighttime lots of refractive light reflected reflected Whoa, whoa, what are you breaking for? Why was that car breaking? Oh, they're stopping for ambulancias. Well, now we gotta call 911 for you. Oh. 
Uh. All right. So here's the thing. Uncommon thing. Can't really anticipate this. Uh, but we're riding in town, low visibility for us and for everyone else, low traction for us. Everyone else has pretty much decent traction. This is why you need to maintain a good position for safety. You need to have good vision, good escape routes, and good space cushions. You need to constantly be locating hazards, which intersections, definite hazards. You never know what's going to happen in intersections. Not everyone's going to go through them, which we just saw. Also, you need to start paying attention to your hearing. You know, if you can, hear these ambulances, hearing everything. Uh, but yeah, we need to ad adapt to these hazards and navigate these threats if they ha are happening. Are, 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 are happening. I can't even talk. So there's that right there. So we're rev bombing. I don't know if we're downshifting or whatnot, but we have uh, emergency services coming. So that's why this person's applying the brakes on a green. So what do we do in this situation? So that is what's causing the issue. Now, what do we do because we're a part of the situation? We need to either swerve and go. Because our total stopping distance is terrible. You know, we have to do multiple options. You need to make these really abrupt changes if we don't have good following distance, if we're not paying attention. When we seek out and recognize hazardous situations, it's because we are looking far ahead. And we need to be paying attention because if we look far ahead, that's going to give us time. And time buys us options. We need to stay aware. So right here, terrible situation. Now let's probably no, uh, didn't want to crash, didn't mean to crash, maybe was paying attention. Things just kind of happened because you can't see because of the, the raindrops and it's nighttime, all these different things. So what do we do just in case everything fails? We wear full gear. Hopefully we mitigated any type of injury. And hopefully if our buddies are riding behind us or these other motorcyclists that we're coming up on, hopefully everybody's getting medically trained so hopefully we can rescue another rider. Smart rider principles. What I love about them. They're universal. So he looks like he's wearing gear. It's still going to be painful though. It's still going to be painful. And she didn't mean to hurt somebody. Now this video is specifically for those that are having difficulty with their big cruiser motorcycles. Once again, we're using the 2022 Indian Chief Dark Horse to do this exercise. I do have a diagram, it's floating up on the screen. Basically use a parking lot and each and every two spaces this is where we put those cones, okay? We're gonna start off on the outer cones and if that feels too easy, we're gonna move on to the inner cones and we're gonna try to do this fun little thing, all right? Let's see how this works. Let's see how it goes. All right, so once again, we're going to go through here, change the direction in the middle. We're going to look where we want to go, just like the U-turn. Go through here, change in the middle. We're going to go around. Big, wide, arcing moves. Now, this seems kind of easy. Oh, never mind. As soon as I say that, I put my foot down. Now, what did we learn in the U-turn when we want to put our foot down? I'm not using enough counterbalance, and I'm not looking where I want to go. I'm not using maybe enough throttle. Maybe I'm not using enough friction zone. All right, so this figure eight seems pretty easy. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do U-turn up here. And I'm going to do it on the inside, just like the U-turns we did on the inside of the cones. And what I mean by the inside of the cones is basically outside of these parking spaces. All right? So I'm going to go all the way up here. I'm going to start off with the right hand. Oh, I hit that cone. Maybe I was speaking too early. So if you get to that point, well, you know what? I should not be doing that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get back through here and do more of these outer U-turns because maybe I'm just not, I'm getting a little cocky. All right, so let's see if I can do these faster then. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting more bike bonded. I'm getting, I'm getting more used to the, how the bike feels. Oh, give it some throttle. Give it some friction zone. Okay, okay, so I'm looking where I want to go. Okay, I feel good. I'm going to try it again. And that's the whole point of this. You're constantly, constantly evaluating what it is and how you are doing. I had to fix that drone. It was acting a little funky, slowly moving away. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to go through the middle of this instead of the outside. 
So head turn. Body weight. Ah, I went a little too wide, but you know what? I'm improving, right? And that is the whole point. So let's say you got pretty good and you're doing that, but constantly reevaluate what you're doing. Start off on the outside. Head turn, friction zone. Counterweight, everything. And there's that diagram in here. Now once you get good at this, you can constantly go in circles. You can figure out that balance point if you really want to. And you're going to get better and better and better. And once you get better and better and better at this, you can start taking smaller and smaller turns and learning what it is that you need to do to make that happen. Once again, it's all about that counterbalance head look, friction zone, throttle control. And you'll just constantly get better and better and better and understand your bike more and more and more. That figure eight is a ton of fun. I know this was a little unstructured, but here's the thing. What you need to focus on is the same stuff as the U-turn. You need to head turn, friction zone, throttle control, turn those handlebars, counterweighting, and now outside of just committing to it, you need to change that direction. So you need to be able to switch and move around and I like to say dance with the bike you're dancing with it you're learning your partner you're learning what it can do and you're gonna have a ton of fun doing it practice 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 train with a purpose ride smart and I'll be seeing you around